Welcome to the chapter six workout problem video. There's only two problems in this uh, workout problem video, but the first one we'll see is, is rather lengthy. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first slide of problem one, we break the problem into, we can break into several parts. And the first part of the problem, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the information that we're given about the marginal utility or the incremental changes in utility as we consume additional units. In this case, we're consuming uh, poems and cucumbers. Uh, the information says that uh, the marginal utility, it gives us the marginal utility uh, columns. And then from that, we can go ahead and calculate the total utility gained as consumption increases. So as we see here in, as uh, poems, one poem is consumed, that's moving from zero to one, right? Zero poems to one poem. So that first poem that we consume gives us uh, a marginal utility of 30, uh, which, it, which gives us total utility of 30, right? So that's the only one that we're consuming. Same thing with cucumbers. As we consume one cucumber, we receive six units, uh, marginal utility, uh, total being six, okay? So here we go, as we increase our utility, or as we increase our consumption, we're going to be increasing the utility. So here we're at uh, two poems that we're consuming. Our marginal utility is 27 for the second poem. So we actually add these two together to get us the total utility, right, of 57. So that's kind of what we're gonna be doing down here is we're adding additional or incremental units. So for the third one, for example, we're gonna be adding all three of these units to give us the total utility. Same thing with the cucumbers. We're adding all three of the, f the first three cucumbers to get that next number. And so let's go ahead and uh, slide over and, s and see what the total utilities are as we continue to consume. Okay, so all three of these are gonna equal 81. All four are gonna equal 102. All five, and we can keep going, right, as we consume more and more poems and more and more cucumbers. So we're just gonna keep adding to, and then the cucumbers are gonna look like this and just keep going as we consume more and more cucumbers. Now, the next question is, to, in order for us to figure out what our uh, utility maximizing point is, we have to know what the budget side of things are. So give, this gives us the cost of cucumbers and the cost of poems. So poems cost us three bronze coins. See here, three bronze coins. And the cu cucumber only costs us one bronze coin a piece. Okay, so we're able then to uh, draw this out in a budget constraint line. So it tells us to put the cucumbers on the horizontal axis and the poems on the vertical axis. And so what we do is, the uh, easiest way to draw this line, since we know it is a, is a line, it, it is linear, we can go ahead and draw the, the maximums out. So if, say for example, if we only consume poems, that's uh, how many poems will it take to use all of our 18 bronze coins? So right, so this is this is our total, this is our budget is gonna be 18, right, bronze coins. And so we go ahead and say, okay, at $3 a pop, divide 18 by uh, three into 18, that gives us six poems. And we go ahead and do the same thing for cucumbers at a dollar a pop, we're gonna replace this three with a one, and of course, then that becomes 18 cucumbers. Okay, so this is our budget constraint. And then what we can do is we can say, okay, what are the different combinations that we're gonna have? So as we draw here on the, on the budget constraint, we say, okay, what if we go down to five? How many cucumbers is that that we're giving up? Right, if we go down to five poems, we know that we're gonna be able to only consume right here at this point, that's actually uh, three cucumbers. Okay, and then so on and so forth. So we're going down to four, three, two, one, zero. So we know at zero poems, we're able to consume 18 cucumbers, and then we're gonna be uh, going up by uh, three each one. So we're gonna say down to four, oops, down to four is gonna give us six, right? Down to three, it's gonna give us nine. Down to two is gonna be 12 down to one is gonna give us 15. So those are our different combinations right here, 
right? These are our different points, points right here on our curve where we have combinations of poems and cucumbers. We can go back then to our uh, total, right? Total utility here and we can actually add these up, okay? So we know that as we consume five poems here, we got five poems that we're consuming for 120 uh, utils, utility of total utility of 120, we know we're only able to consume then three cucumbers. So we add these together and that's our total utility, right? And then we go keep going. We need more options for cucumbers on this total utility. But we, that, that, we, that way we know we can combine them. We're going to do that next. So this is our budget constraint. And now we're going to start talking about our utility maximization. And so in order to do that, one way to do that is to build a uh, kind of a table that looks like this. And so right off the bat, we're gonna say, what is our total utility? And we're gonna go ahead and plug in our total utility for the choice that we have. So if we were to have zero poems and 18 cucumbers, if we run out that cucumber total utility all the way down, we know we're only gonna have our 63, right? Right off the bat, 63 uh, total utility, uh, 90 and 111. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and calculate our gains from moving from one option, option one right here, right? Down to option two, option three, right? So we're gonna move this direction and we're gonna say, okay, now what's our gain on the poem side if we move from here to here and what's our overall gain and how does that work? Okay, so this is, this is the gain on poems that we're gonna get, right? So, because we're gonna gain one additional poem and the first poem that we consume is going to be 30. We know that that is the case from, from past information. And then as we, as we scale back on the cucumbers, we know we're gonna lose three uh, points of utility from consuming uh, three less cucumbers. They're one point of utility a piece, I guess you could say, utils. Utils are really the units that we talk about when we're doing utility. So then the overall gain is gonna be this 30 minus the utils that were gaining up, given up from not consuming cucumbers in the place of poems, and the overall gain is gonna be 27. 30 minus 27, is that optimal? Probably not. And we can revert back to our maximization rule, right? Our utility maximization rule. So is this optimal? As it turns out, it's not optimal. Uh, so we're gonna keep calculating, okay? So as we uh, move here, so now, now we're gonna to move to the next one. And so our marginal gain from, from more poems, as we move this direction, we have two poems, right? The second poem here is going to be 27. And we know we're gonna give up three more cucumbers for that, and so those are a point of utility a piece, right? Which is six. So 27 minus six is going to be an overall gain of 21. Is that optimal? Does that give us the most utility? No, we're still increasing, so we can still have more more utility to gain here as we as we do combinations. We can see here with total utility, right? We're maximizing this, so we see it's still growing. That's really the point. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go to the next slide and keep going on with this calculation. Okay, so so our next calculation then is our next row, and in that case, uh, right here. So our next. Uh, poem that we're going to consume. We're going to have 24 points. We're going to give up three more uh, cucumbers and we are going to have a difference between 24 and 9 of 15. Is this optimal? No. We're still going, right? We can actually see as we look down our total utility right here, we can actually see our optimal utility, right? So as we calculate down to that, we're going to have to fill all these in. Our next one, we go ahead and go through the same scenario. Here's our there's four poems and six cucumbers. Now we're coming to five poems and three cucumbers. Okay, at this point, uh, we are going to be at a point where our marginal utility here is going to, uh, it's gonna be maxed out, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we are now in a point where it, this is called disutility, okay? Where we're actually decreasing in overall utility as we continue to consume or continue to change beyond that point. 
Okay, what we want is we wanted to have it equal. If we were to drop to the next one, this is this would be our result, and we don't want to do that. And so our optimal point we can see is here, right? Uh, that's our option. And really, the again the multi the utility maximization rule here is marginal utility divided by price equals uh, of the first unit of in this case it's going to be poems right we'll do poems here price of the poems marginal utility of the poems it, we want it to equal the marginal utility of cucumbers divided by the price of cucumbers and we want those to be equal at that point we're able to say okay the marginal utility of poems uh, in this case we're going to go ahead and back up a little bit and I'll I'll tell you kind of what this is so that this is the this is really the rule right that we learn in the book and so this is this is proved here as we solve this and these are not applicable because they're not the the uh, maximization point so let's look at uh, problem number two it says if a ten percent decrease in the price of one product that you buy causes an eight percent increase in the quantity demanded of that product. Will another 10% decrease in the price cause another 8% increase? No more, no less in quantity demanded. So the answer is uh, no. Uh, and it's, so it's very highly unlikely and here's the reason. So we have our price here, right? So here's our price, it's headed downward this direction, right? So if we were to draw that on a line, our, let's say for example, here's our equilibrium. So price would go down 10%. So this is this is a 10% decrease right here, 10%. And then it would uh, the quantity in this case would decrease by 8%. Okay. Really, what we're ch talking about is percentage points. The percent as we get down here into lower price ranges, the percent of lower price ranges, uh, it's going to take less. A smaller change in price to equal 10%, right? So, like for example, uh, we're up here at 100. Let's say the price here is 110, and it goes down to 100, right? That would be that 10 point difference there is uh, 10%, right? But as we get down here, and we're at like a dollar and 10 cents, right? And we go to just a dollar. So that is a 10% decrease as well, but that's only 10 cents, right? So is $10 difference in price going to cause the same demand increase or decrease as 10 cents? And the reason that's not highly likely is let's, let's say at 110 to $100, the demand is somewhere close to, oh, I don't know, it's somewhere close to maybe uh, two units, right? And then it goes, it's going to increase by 2%. So what's an what's a 2% increase of 2 units? It's going to be pretty keeny, right? It's going to be somewhere in the range of uh let's let's say it's going to be somewhere in the range of 2. Point, uh let's say uh 2 somewhere around there, right? So 0 0.2 more units. Now if we go out here where our 10%. So that's so these are combined. This is option A, right? This is point A and this is point A or change A, right? From these first ones. Now we're doing uh, an additional 10%, right? So as we go down the line, as we go down the demand curve, then uh, the price change, right? Prices as prices get smaller, the change gets smaller, but as quantities as we go down the curve here, the quantity changes actually to get that 8%, they tend to be larger, right? So let's say for example, now we're down here at 10 cents and we go, okay, here's, uh, we're at 100 units and then the 8% or the 8% increase is eight units. Are we gonna have a swing in eight units for 10 cents? Like we would have a swing in only not even a third of a unit for ten dollars, right? So these, this kind of comparison, this is kind of an extreme case, but these comparisons on how percentage changes along the an inverse, uh, along the uh, inverse demand curve, right? The negative demand curve is is really what we're comparing when we do percentage increases. It talks to, and with this, we're able to look at demand percentage increases in the same light as elasticity 
and how elasticity changes uh, from one point to another. And also, there's another concept uh, that you might look at in the book. There's an appendix, and it talks about indifference curves and how utility and demand are connected through those indifference curves. And that's really how demand is set up and how the theory of of uh, the law of demand is set up. That and that's, might also be interesting for you to look at. So anyways, hopefully this helps you, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.